Good evening. This is the December 6, 2018 meeting of the Mineral Planning and Zoning Commission. We're in the Town Council Chambers. It is now 7.01 p.m. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, commission, please introduce yourself, starting on my right. Ryan Condon, alternate. Kenneth Wilk, alternate. John Informe Kellos, alternate. William, William Porter, chairman. Michael Riley, vice chairman. Will Agresta, planning and zoning administrator. Rick Schultz, town planner. Scott Schultz, town engineer. And? Laura Bargalti, acting reporting secretary. Thank you. Um, commissioners Lisi, Ambrosi, and Maini will not be present this evening. So we'll we're seating all three. Everybody. They're all seated. Item number three, organizational and administrative matters. There's nothing. Item number four, general public participation. Is there anyone who would like to address the commission on an issue that's not related to a public hearing? Seeing none, we'll move on. Item number five, general appointment. 1585 Monroe Turnpike, rezoning of property from business to residential use. Kimball Family Trust. Good evening, members of the commission. Uh, for the record, my name is Kevin Soley. I'm a licensed professional engineer in the state of Connecticut with Soley Engineering, offices here in Monroe, and a resident of Monroe, 16 Crown View Drive, and also here is uh, uh, John Kimball. Um, I know the the, the uh, appointment talks about trying to do residential here, but we're actually here to talk a little bit more broader, a, a broader sense about this particular property, it's the, the Stevenson Lumber property. Um, so I'm sure the commission is very familiar with this piece of property. It's been, uh, uh, John recently got the property under, um, under control, uh, an option to purchase the property. Uh, we recently came in and met with um, new planner Schultz and kind of talked about some of the challenges that we've been seeing with this particular property. Um, you know, up until 2007, this was actually the sixth highest uh, taxpayer on the grand list. And then once Stevenson Lumber closed their doors in 2008, it's kind of sat in a derelict condition for, for several years. There was a, a three year period where Eversource used it for storage, for outdoor storage of. Um, staging equipment, uh, I think it's part of like some storm damage. Uh, for high, high, high voltage line work. Um, and since then, it's been, it's kind of come before this commission a couple times. I know there was some discussion about possibly doing some, some residential uh, up on the top of the property. Um, the property itself, it, it, it uh, from a grading standpoint, it presents some, some challenges. This area is a lower, lower elevation. This is a, a little bit raised up. You can see a change in grade here. And then this portion up here, which was a former 30,000 square foot manufacturing, uh, trust manufacturing building is, is even at a higher elevation. So there's a considerable amount of grade change across the property. Um, a myriad of, myriad of existing buildings that have kind of served in a number of different uses. And it's interesting because the operation that was here, even if you look at what was there, it doesn't really fit into the current zoning. You know, we had all this manufacturing in a B2 zone. Um, so it really didn't fit into the current reg, certainly. Um, one of the things we've been talking about is, and as John's been trying to figure out a way to get this active again, uh, being, a, being a better contributing um, property to the community, as we really take a look at where it's located, um, you know, there was talk about possibly doing some retail on the site. I think there's some, um, there's been a desire to try to get this active, maybe some mixed use, maybe some residential. But when you really look at the location, the things that retailers typically look for are rooftops. They want population density. And when you look at where this site's located, it's it's somewhat in the middle of nowhere. It has, you know, it has good access in terms of, you know, I-84, getting off 84 and coming down Route 34. This is the primary connection over to, to New Haven. Um, but when you actually really look at look to see what's really around here, uh, trying to create a draw is a little bit of a, of a challenge with the site. So we came and we talked to um, a, Planner Schultz, and what we talked about doing is 
uh, trying to propose or, or, or seeing if the commission would consider uh, looking at something for this particular property, and we kind of came up with something as a mixed use uh, economic development zone. And that would basically, what we'd, what we'd like to, to come in and request is an ability to create a, a zone specific for this property and build in a number of uses which we think could be um, incorporated to at least bring some vibrancy back to the site, to actually create some activity. I think over the years, there's been all kinds of uh, graffiti, you know, kids coming in there, breaking windows. Um, John's actually spent quite a bit of time recently cleaning up the property. There was all kinds of trash and, and debris left, left on this location. That's been cleaned up. They cleaned some brush. Um, some underground fuel tanks and, and fuel pumps were recently removed from the property, trying to make sure to, to, to deal with some of those issues. Um, but now we're at a point where we want to, you know, in order to revitalize this piece, to utilize this property, to get it active again, you know, I think based on the current regulations, we would be looking for some, for the commission to consider some flexibility um, to consider uh, various uses. You know, this property had, you know, eight acres of, of uh, or at least over two acres of, of just outdoor storage on the property for several years. Current regulations don't, certainly don't allow for that, and it's based on building area, but, you know, from, a, from an opportunity standpoint, you know, this could be used for, for, for storage of uh, vehicles, um, outdoor storage, things like that. You know, I think there's an opportunity potentially to bring in some, some contractors, maybe some outdoor storage. And what we wanted to talk about was kind of a list of uses that we think we'd like to incorporate into a mixed use uh, economic development district, get the commission's feedback, and then talk a little bit about the process on how we would want to possibly pursue something like this. So, yeah, I was going to say, um, you know, um, one of the uh, one of the challenges, as Kevin pointed out already, is you know the build buildings. Um, I don't know how you did that, but uh, uh, buildings like this. It was thirty thousand square feet. It was used to manufacture trusses. Um, you know, uh, a building like that, um, you know, they, 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 this whole area here was used as, as uh, outside storage. There's actually loading uh, platforms in this area. There's, there's catch basins and drainage. There's, there's the, 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 the benefit of the site is there's a ton of infrastructure in place. Underground utilities, three-phase power, very good buildings. The, you know this this building uh, this building right here is in excellent physical condition. There's you know one or two small roof leaks. Um, the kids have torn it up a bit, but but nothing that can't be fixed in terms of you know residing, repainting, things like that. Other buildings are you know are are much more um, antique. And th this building, this is where the lumberyard actually started, and then they moved across the street. You know, this building was one of the early, early buildings uh, on the site. I guess, I think Dave Bjorklund's father was the builder of the, like, the, whoops, end of slideshow. Um, like, like, uh, you know, they're, they're, you know the, 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 the thing's got a ton of history in the, in the, in the community. The, you know, the people in Stevenson, you know, half the firefighters were also lumber employees, the whistle would go off and they'd all leave the jobs and go fight a fire and then come back to work, you know. What we want, what we're trying to create is something that, you know, again, Kevin said flexibility, um, Planner Shelves basically, you know, said, you know, you can't really go modify the DI zone to fit the pre-existing uses or go change the B2 zone to add the uses that you need. The best thing to do would be to kind of create a, a zone that worked for the property specifically, not that it's spot that 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 it would kind of be a zone in and, in and of itself. It's a gateway property. Obviously, you know, I can almost hit it with a rock. My arm isn't as, as strong as, you know, Mike Morales' arm in terms of, you know, being on the throw. But the, um, you know, I can almost hit it from my house. But we've watched it decay over over the years, and you know I've approached we've approached you know Kevin's approached grocers, we've approached other people. We're having a, a difficult time finding people in the B you know in the B two zone classification who have an interest in the property. So we want well we don't want to abandon that completely um, because 
it really would be nice to have another restaurant on the side of town, that kind of thing. So we don't want to completely uh, abandon it. Um, you know, Kevin's right. You know, one of the things we're trying to do is breathe some life into this thing uh, immediately. This area here was used for outside storage um, of lumber because there's a rail spur that comes in. The, the nice thing about the property from a from a insulation standpoint is, you know, this is this is a, a I lost it again. This is a rail line here that runs runs around the edge of the property. The the other part of the property, it, it, there's high tension wires that run across here. You know, um, we're we're thinking, you know, uh, trucks, boats, RVs, tractor trailers could could utilize this big expansive parking lot for uh, outside storage of vehicles for a parking area. This building is ideally suited to make, you know, seven or eight uh, contractor bays. Um, this building uh, could, could be used, you know, for a more retail related use. You know, again, we've looked, we're, we're, we haven't abandoned the idea of, of residential. We're still looking at residential for the upper portion of the property. The views from this portion of the property are beautiful. It could also be a catering facility potentially, but I know we have a catering facility, but this could be a different catering facility. So, um, so that's why when we talk about flexibility, what, what we're saying is, you know, we need the ability to kind of, you know, start reaching out to tenants and saying, you know, look, what, what, you know, do you have a manufacturing business? Yeah, we could put you into the building. Do you have a catering idea? Yeah, I think we could put you onto the onto this site. Um, in the meantime, while we're trying to, you know, pump some life into it, the beauty of the outside storage and vehicle parking is basically it's striping the parking lot, putting numbers on spaces, and 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 it's a, a low cost way to 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 try and bring some revenue in, start paying the taxes, get you know, get the property up and running and get traffic coming in and out of the property. Generally, traffic is viewed as a bad thing and this property is viewed as a good thing. Getting people to come into the property and and visit it and see it and want to do business on the property is a a hugely positive uh, thing. So, um, because one of those people might know the person who is the guy that has the restaurant or, you know, that kind of thing. So what are the other uses? Um, well, we talked Kevin? about, you know, uh, possible recreation uses. Um, that that 30,000 foot building that John referenced up on the top, that actually could fit a, an indoor ice rink. Um, the, the, the longer building here could potentially be maybe like an indoor shooting range, something like that, because it's 300, it, it's, uh, it's, it's 100 yards. Um, possibly ener energy generation. This could actually be an opportune location for a solar farm, and it's close proximity to the distribution lines. There, there's a there's a potential opportunity there, um, but it's you know, but but when you look at the current B2 zoning, that doesn't fit within there. Um, municipal uses. This building could be a possible opportunity for the public works garage. They've been looking for a new location for quite some time. Um, food establishments, like we talked about, potential restaurants. The potential for some residential here, um, uh, outdoor storage, as John mentioned, even potentially a brewery or a distillery. Um, those are those have been becoming very popular. Bracious is doing great on 325, but there are also a number of, you know, uh, Bad Sons Brewery is right down the road in Oxford, um, or Derby. There are a number of other things that are that are possible, and, and and you know, there's potential there's potential for those types of uses. So, it's it's a challenge because. We're faced with trying to create a mechanism to, to breathe life back into this, but it doesn't fit within the confines of the current regulations. So the concept would be create this mixed use economic development district, have a list of, of permitted uses, and then try to create a mechanism so that if we, if we were able to say, okay, we have a potential to do, you know, like John mentioned, storage of boats and trailers and RVs here, which would, would require minimum infrastructure work because the infrastructure is there, like John said, it's <coughs> striping but be able to process that maybe through a site plan application process and without having to make sure that, okay, what are you doing for the balance of the property, right? And we need to be able to kind of look at, at individual areas as, as opportunities are, are presented and, and how, we can, how we can possibly kind of bring that through the commission through the process. So it's, it's unique. It's, it's, it's out of the box thinking. 
it's not within the current constraints, and that's why we're here to see what the commission's thoughts are. Well, a couple of things. Um, yeah, I was reading through the POCD last night, looking to see what it said specifically about potentially repurposing some, some of our commercial properties, and, and the POCD doesn't really address that per se. But it, it does talk about you know, our gateway areas, which this is considered one. It talks about our commercial corridors, which right. this is one, <clears throat> and the need for the town to develop and, and expand on those uses, primarily for the, for the tax benefits. Um, and, and I agree that a B2 maybe doesn't encompass enough uses for this particular piece of property. What, 40 some odd acres? 46, yeah. So I, I think that, I think that there's the potential for other uses, you know, and we would have to look at them mm -hmm. more or less use by use and see if the commission felt that they were appropriate for that, that area, that neighborhood. Um, one thing that I'm not too inclined I know we had a previous general appointment for the trust tech portion of the property to possibly put in some residential. It was limited, I think it was like 10 lots. But I wouldn't think that a heavy <coughs> residential component would necessarily be beneficial. Um, you mentioned mixed use, you know, mixed use with maybe a small residential component. But, you know, as you know, uh, Residential properties are a, an expense to the town, and <clears throat> I think our our current expenditures is somewhere over sixteen thousand dollars per student. You know, one single-family home doesn't cover the tax burden of a, of a student, so right. we have to be careful that we don't go too heavy on residential, especially in this area, because it is one of the one of the larger commercial areas in our town. Mm -hmm. You know, we have just narrow corridors yep. on 25 and 111. This is a, a substantial piece of property. You know, just on the other side of the tracks, we recently rezoned the corner lot on the corner of 111 and 34 that was a residential property. And we just, uh, within the last year, year and a half, made that uh, B1 or B2? B2. <coughs> So, you know, it is a commercial quarter. Yeah. And, and we have to, I think, maintain that. I, I think one of the other challenges, too, with this site is because it's so disturbed, because it's been, you know, there from a historical standpoint, there's a, a river used to flow through here. You know, there are, there are underground drainage structures that are 30 feet deep through the portion of the property. It's incredible how the site's been developed and, and disturbed. So, so one of the limiting features is really from is a septic standpoint, which also adds kind of further restriction for a larger intensity residential development. So I think that's it's a well-founded. Well, point. I understand the, you know the, the difficulties with larger commercial uses. Like you said, there's right you know for miles around this site. Right. There's no density. Right. I welcome some of the other commissioners to express their opinions, viewpoints. And uh, you got the park, the old uh, lumber yard too. Did you purchase that? Too? So, somebody else actually um, purchased that earlier on uh, as a separate transaction, so we don't have that. Um, but it's uh, they're kind of, I think what they're doing is waiting to see what happens on this side of the street. Actually, they told me exactly those words. <laughs> We're waiting to see what you do to, 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 before we figure out what, uh, what we're gonna do, but we, they wanna redevelop it, but that's a very difficult uh, site to, um, it's narrow. to redevelop very also, you know, so that's gonna have quite, be, you know, <clears throat> another challenging site. But you know, I think if we do the right thing, you know, both sides of the street will really could tremendously benefit, you know. Uh, but uh, are the uses that we talked about, obviously Chairman Porter expressed some concerns about residential, which we'll definitely take into account. Um, are there any other
concerns, or are there any other uses that you're that we're not thinking about. that you ha that you are thinking about that we haven't thought about because you know this is a redevelopment opportunity for the town and we want to work you know with you know with the commission to kind of create something positive here. Well, you, you mentioned you know recreation, indoor or outdoor recreation, uh, might not be a a bad option. Yeah. I keep floating the idea of like a like a, an indoor outdoor go kart track. You know, sometimes the, the seasonality of that makes it difficult to, to, to look at from a from an economic standpoint. But there's certainly an opportunity. It's a big enough property, to, and that's the thing. So, building that in is what gives us the flexibility. Is there not enough density for an office complex? I don't believe so. I, I think I think the I think the 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 septic issue is one that is one that it presents itself here but you know the town also has a lot of LOR district that that you know it hasn't been able to generate that interest from a, from a from an office building standpoint and i think frankly from an office user standpoint you know there's there's other properties available in closer proximity to 25 and, and 111 that intersection you know so the south end of town which would probably be more advantageous for that type of use in this particular property just given its location but not to rule it out, you know? Have you looked at any uses that could take advantage of the railroad? Rail is difficult um, in Connecticut in general. The DOT, for some reason, owns 95% of the rail and then licenses it out to 19 different companies to operate different segments of the rail. So in this area, we're on Housatonic Rail. This thing then has to link up three or four different through three or four different other ownership tracks in order to get to like CSX or P and W. And what we found so far is that in trying to negotiate the different uh, rail access agreements, by the time we get to a track that, that's good for commerce, we end up it ends up being more expensive than trucking off the site. So um, until the state of Connecticut changes how they manage their rail assets, I don't see rail being a big positive here. And uh, but you know, we we certainly, I mean, having an active rail on property is a huge asset, and, and we certainly would not over. You know, we will advertise in, in any of the, the rail-related magazines that this has, you know, rail assets and. You know, because you can rail stuff into Fairfield County, you know, on this site. Um, so, yeah, that's a good point. John, any thoughts? Has, uh, have you thought about using uh, or using this mixed-use economic zone in any other areas of town rather than just having this one area uh, mm -hmm. be designated as that? Could that be used somewhere else in addition to this? It, it, potentially. Okay. I mean, we, we, we were, our first task, at least for approaching this, is, is what's the best way to breathe life into this, and then what's the best way from a regulatory standpoint to do that? Um, I think if the town wants to consider, you know, we want to try to create something that's specific to this, so it gives the most flexibility, because we don't want to say, all right, if, if it's going to go here and possibly somewhere else, are there concerns about uses that are okay here but not okay there, which would potentially restrict this? I definitely think that type of that type of thought process is, is a good one, um, and it is something that probably the town may want to consider in some other areas. But but for this particularly, this was primarily for this. Um, it was actually the genesis of the, the of the planner that um, kind of came up with this concept. We were originally talking about. Uh, what was that PD? Uh, a PDD, like a plan development district. There, there are a number of communities around us that, that utilize that from a planning tool, um, which basically kind of gives the commission the ability to have some flexibility when uh, an applicant comes in to apply for a plan development district. So it, it allows to look at other uses and things like that. Planner Schultz, this is something that's been used in Shelton quite a bit, so, so uh, he has a lot of experience with that. Um, but that being said, um, I think as the life of that concept evolved over time in some surrounding communities, it gets it gets abused. It's being so, used for evil. 
So there was so, so there was some reservation about opening up that type of planning practice in the community, and this seemed like a more um, conservative conservative way to kind of deal with the problem. Uh, <clears throat> you have the water view right there. Any thoughts on a hotel? Potentially, and that, can, that also comes back to, to, to sewer. But yeah, the, the the vistas up on the top where that trust deck building is would be great for a hotel. Um, but but again, for a hotel, you know, they the, the national brands, the chains, they want 140 rooms. Mm -hmm. A hyposeptic generation is, is potentially problematic. Not to say that it's you know, so so that would, that's a whole other component to it. But certainly, we don't want to rule that out either. We wouldn't rule it out, but it's, it wouldn't necessarily be an A location for a hotel because of the lack of proximity to like a direct 84 interchange or a 95 or 8 interchange. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's uh, come close on a lot of uses, and that's the thing. You know, that's why, like, you know, somebody had suggested the, you know, I was walking through with somebody and they suggested the ho hockey. You know, and I played high school hockey. I didn't even think about hockey in the building. And he, then we, he, comes up on his iPhone, okay, here's the dimensions you need. We measure out the building, oh, a hockey rink fits, you know. I know we don't have a hockey rink in town. Uh, Newtown shelter. doesn't have a hockey rink, so, but I don't know how to operate a hockey rink, but maybe we can find somebody <laughs> to operate a hockey rink. But that kind of flexibility is, would give us the opportunity to, you know, explore, essentially explore that idea and figure out if something like hockey works. But, you know, and it's those kinds of ideas that are, we're looking for and then one other kind of wild one what about uh agriculture farming but more like agro-tourism i mean you wait in line to get past jones right now with the christmas trees we actually thought about doing a vertical growing facility for vegetables and 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 then doing a farm Hops. farm to table yeah. restaurant you know so there, there's a few different agriculture related uses we also thought the solar would tie in well to you know, indoor crop production, so that uh, we could use the power on our own site to generate the power for the for the crops. So, um, yeah, but that's uh, you know, that's what we need is kind of the out of the box uh, ideas. Are you going to remodel any of these buildings? They're in bad shape. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, they all need work, and if we don't start addressing them now. We'll start losing critical components of them, but structurally, the buildings are sound. But they, you know, there, there's, there's holes in roofs and siding, and almost every window on the entire site, and then every window that was in stock in the buildings, were all smashed by the kids. You know, uh, mm -hmm. apparently it's become a massive uh, hangout. So, um, any thought with villaging, kind of making it like a village where? The buildings all kind of start looking alike or similar architecture like some of our other gateway properties we've talked about maybe challenging with this one well, I, I, I think you got to get the users first right yeah. well that's the thing yeah. I, I think yeah. i think long term i think long term like that's the exact opportunity that we want to try to pursue the ability to redevelop and create that kind of place but until you know there's some sort of market change or shift we're just trying to create a situation where there's some activity and some, some revenue and some taxes and things like that. And I think, but the long-term goal is absolutely, what's the highest and best use of this, for this from a planning standpoint? How do, we, how do we get from now to then? And then once that happens, how do we, you know, how do we maximize that potential? My wife would like a grocery store, a TJ Maxx, and a couple other things, but, you know, <laughs> I keep telling her, you know, not today, but maybe at some point. Trader Joe's, can't you get Trader Joe's? <laughs> <laughs> Even Aldi's is good. Yeah. <laughs> is the property large enough to, at some point, get a density on it that would support a treatment plant? Um, it's large enough, I think, you know, from a, it, it is large enough. And, you know, a lot of investigation would have to go into that. But yeah, I mean, given its location, you do the renovation, things like that, that's a potential. Um, but it's, there's a whole lot that goes into that. I mean, because if you get into rehab and assisted living kind of things, and you know, and then that starts opening place for part of it to be retail because people right. got to visit and the doctors need a place to eat. Right. You know, I mean, how you far is it from the sewer line? How is there anything down the 80, 30, 40 either way? No, Newtown's all, the Newtown sewer only goes In to the, the high school. Yeah. 
the, on, the, on the other side of the high school, not the 34 side of the high school. Um, and you'd have to go all the way down to well, I think that, that Oxford. would certainly open up a number of opportunities. From, from, from a municipal planning standpoint, this and is down the bottom of the hill. You know, we tried. You could run through all the way up the road. Yeah, we tried uh, from like an assisted living up at the, con up at the old convent. And People were just saying it's too far out, too far out. At some point in time, it won't be too far out. But right now, we're, just, we're probably ten years from. And that's that's why some of the things like this outside storage, you know, you're striping a lot and putting a number down. You're not investing a huge amount of money, but it's a placeholder while we work on the next use. Do you think you know? too far out? Too far out from what? I mean, if you look at some of the assisted living houses that are in the area, they're in the middle of the they're building the well we have a few that are religious you know like Masonic yeah, care that's in the the yeah it's in the Ashlar you know they're, they're in the middle of the woods and nowhere but they're they were religiously based and built you know kind of like the convent was built and then they created an assisted living place out of it but the ones the you know there's three or four big assisted living building companies and basically they're they're focusing you know much Dan closer Barry, to urban Brookfield, centers yeah Stanford, I know I mean there's yeah. the one in Redding which you gotta well, have and, you money know, and money to go, but yeah. it's, yeah. it's all by itself and yeah. it's huge. Right. We're going to need assisted living, but right now I, I don't think we're affluent enough to afford assisted living. So yeah, I mean focusing. that is the other draw. They're looking at a community where the money is higher. But. Exactly, and and so that that's will be the next tier. So um, any other comments, questions, concerns? No, you know, as you know, this is all an informal, non-binding conversation. But of course, I think that the the general feedback from the other commissioners is that yes, you know, we we should investigate some other potential uses for this property. Great. Um, I think maybe you know you've already met with Rick. Maybe the you should come in and uh, regulation subcommittee come into the subcommittee and we can start you know, looking at some of the finer details. About this, does the is there does the commission generally support the concept of okay we want to look at one portion of the site, you know, and create a mechanism to allow us to kind of focus on pieces and not because sometimes oftentimes when we come in for an application if, if something else is out of sorts the commission wants to address that we, we want to create some flexibility so we can say we're focusing on this this is how we can make this area work um, and I think that's going to be unique to this property to get it active again. So without formally subdividing it, just looking at it as if it were subdivided. Individual, you know, almost like individual pads on the property. Yeah, I, I think the way you would do that is, and obviously you're going to change the zoning in a certain sense. You really need to do a good existing condition analysis of the property, the opportunities of the property, what it supports, what it doesn't support, what that infrastructure is. That starts help defining the areas that could be good for these types of uses, because then that also defines your uses that you're after. Right. And... The thing I would question you a little bit about is, I mean, obviously flexibility is important because we need to get somebody attracted. Right. But it can't be such a range where that this use doesn't belong with this use or this use because if you develop this, you've now knocked out maybe these uses because they're just incompatible. So you really should be careful that it doesn't become a mismatch. Because you want to be the whole thing successful, not just the first thing. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Um, and we'll keep working. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Sorry. Thank Just taking notes. All right. Moving on to public hearings. <clears throat> First up, item number six. Um, SCP 2018-11. File number 1606. Uh, Planning Zoning Commission, Monroe, Connecticut, notice of public hearing until December 6, 2018. In accordance with Connecticut General Statute 8-7D, a public hearing will be held in the Town, Council, Town Hall Council Chamber, 7 Fanhill Road, Monroe, Connecticut, on Thursday, December 6, 2018, at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter, concerning the following. SCP 2018-11, file 1606A. 1014 Monroe Turnpike, Massac High School, baseball and softball field dugouts, RF2 district, special exception permit application to construct roofed dugout enclosed structures for existing high school 
baseball and softball fields, Board of Education, applicant, Town of Monroe owner. Complete details and copies of all related materials associated with the above matters are on file and available for viewing in the Monroe Planning and Zoning Department office. Okay, well, what do we have for exhibits? Exhibit one, special exception permit application. On exhibit two, site plan sheets. Exhibit three, ART comments from planner. Exhibit four, ART comments from building department. And exhibit five, ART comments from architectural review board. Um, did anyone do the green card and seats for the notice thing? That I don't know. I'd have to check with Gabby. Because I need those for the record. Okay. Uh, have, uh, yeah, let me find out tomorrow. Well, I think it's going to give us a hiccup here. Because mm -hmm. without them, I really shouldn't close the hearing. All right. Um, but we can, that might be fine anyway, because mm -hmm. if you go to the 20th, they'd probably, if they closed and they were going to approve it, wait till the 20th to do that anyway. So, mm -hmm. okay. So, we really won't be that big a deal. All right, you got I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay, thanks. Okay, for the applicant. That's you. So this uh, started out with uh, student. Just your, your name for the record, Jack. Jack Zamry, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you. So uh, this started out with a student project. Actually, Michael Morella is here from uh, one of our wonderful students, also on the Massac baseball team, and he designed this as a uh, senior capstone project. And also, in addition to working with parents to get some plans done, has also been working on the fundraising for these as well. So that's where this began, and. Uh, we're here to take any questions you might have about the projects. Okay. Scott, you're going to run through it? Yeah, I can run through it. Um, so, uh, Scott Schatz, I am town engineer, uh, licensed engineer in the state of Connecticut. Uh, I'm going to run through the uh, site development plan, the narrative, just for the record, get it on the record. It's a special exception permit. Uh, this is a uh, special use in a residential zone, so we're going through a special exception permit. Property is at, uh, it's really three properties. They're uh, 1014 Monroe Turnpike, uh, uh, 1002, and nine make up the, um, uh, the high school facility. I think everybody's familiar with, here's the high school. You got the uh, southerly entrance and the northerly entrance here. The uh, softball field is this area here. And then the uh, baseball field is this, this item here, or this area. Uh, you're probably familiar with the um, football field and the track that was just redone in this area here. That was uh, a recent application and uh, successful construction project. Um, so uh, this proposal is to install uh, four new uh, roofed dugout enclosures. There are two enclosures um, in the baseball field here that will be um, constructed in the same place as the existing dugouts. The existing dugouts are chain link fence with a, a roof structure on it. This will be a uh, poured concrete pad with a um, block wall construction, uh, roof uh, wood framing with uh, metal. Does that one have the, metal or uh, that? The softball one is going to have corrugated. The um, baseball will be a stick frame with uh, asphalt. As asphalt shingles. Okay. Um, this application was not deemed to be substantial um, to the point where it warranted a, an A24 referral. So going through the zoning narrative, um, the um, this is a uh, residential uh, RF2 zone. Uh, the school is not within 500 feet of municip another municipality, so there was no notice uh, needed in that respect. Uh, it has no conservation easements on the property, so there was no notices needed there. And it's located, it is located within the um, Boys Halfway River uh, public watershed. So uh, the two notices to the Commissioner of Public Health and the um, uh, Aquarian Water Company were uh, provided, and I believe there are uh, exhibits in the file. Um, we'll read those off a little bit later. Um, the school campus uh, is within the is within a uh, natural 
diversity database, meaning that it is uh, an, a location that has uh, special concern relative or has some special concern relative to species of significant um, natural communities. But given the fact that we're talking about ball fields that have been previously developed and they're in use, uh, I don't, we're not uh, projecting that there should be any issues with um, uh, species um, in that area. The, the campus itself includes uh, wetlands, which are in this area along the river back in here, uh, quite a distance from, from the ball fields, and again, this is all developed. And also, this area back in here along the river includes a uh, floodplain. Uh, again, this um, is well above the floodplain and out of the limits of, of that. Uh, the high school is connected to public water. Uh, this project uh, is not going to uh, involve that uh, or encroach upon where that water is. However, uh, there is uh, some irrigation in these two fields, and uh, that is something that we're planning on doing uh, in the field uh, to just locate where those uh, irrigation, where that, those uh, items are, so we could avoid that during construction. Um, there uh, is obviously a septic system, very large septic system on this property. I did not get a chance to get it on the drawing, but um, the septic system is close to where this project is proposed. And basically what it is, is it, it, the, uh, there's a very large um, septic, series of septic systems here. Is it something like 30,000 gallons or something? And it comes out and there's a, uh, I believe it's a gravity line that runs along here and then runs down this way. There's two manholes, crosses the uh, access drive. This is a paved access drive that runs down to the, the track and, and the football field. This is a processed stone uh, gravel access way here. But the, the sanitary line runs along here and then cuts across the field here and, and goes to a very large um, uh, leaching area in the uh, outfield. So when the, uh, the pads are cored for these, we're going to have to uh, locate that septic line, uh, get the depth, and provide uh, whatever means is needed, depending upon who the contractor is, to protect that line. Uh, when they come in with the uh, cement truck uh, to pour the uh, slab for that. The uh, A2 survey, there's a request in the file for a waiver of the A2 survey. The, um, uh, there was a, uh, an addendum written for that. Uh, give me a second. Uh, basically, the, the dimensions were all beyond the limits of concern, and the, um, typically the policy of the zoning enforcement officer and the, and the uh, department is that if it's more than 50% or less than 50% greater than the distance of the uh, setback line, then uh, there's, no, there's not really any concern about the accuracy of, of the, the uh, uh, survey or the drawing. Also, the um, dugouts are within the existing ball field limits, so uh, they uh, clearly are within uh, limits of development. So um, I could uh, give you more information on that later if you need it, but we're requesting a waiver of the A2 survey and a waiver of the T2 survey, which is a vertical datum. Uh, they're going to be placed right on the fields. There's no proposed grading other than just making sure it doesn't pond around the, the structure itself. There's no tree clearing proposed. Uh, and the, as I said, it's, they're both, in both cases, all four structures are within the confines of the existing ball fields. Um, the, uh, what we've done if, is we've provided a um, crushed stone pad as a means to provide for stormwater um, uh, quantity and, and 
quality issues. You can see the uh, pad is right here. Um, and it's, I mean, we're talking about numbers that are so small that it, it's hard to even measure, measure that. But basically any new uh, runoff coming off the roof will uh, drain off the roof into a crushed stone pad that will run the length of the structures and uh, be able to filter into the ground, thereby addressing your uh, 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 issues for stormwater quality uh, requirements. The specific uh, structures for the baseball field, which is that, um, that upper uh, field, is that, um, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, the, um, the baseball field, the, these two dugouts, again, the, the block structures, are going to be seven feet uh, deep or wide by 30 feet long, approximately, or 210 square feet. Uh, they're each nine feet high. Uh, masonry block, frame asphalt shingle roof, uh, and they're replacing the chain link structures. The softball field, which is the lower field, um, is uh, they're going to be the chain link structures. They'll be seven and a half feet deep by 28 feet long, 224 square feet, and eight and a half feet high. Uh, and that'll, again, that'll have a uh, wood frame with a metal clad roof uh, on top of that. The block uh, walls are just going to sit on the slab? The block walls are going to sit on the slab, has a, a monolithic pour that will come down into a, a footing. Uh, I'm going to have the compliance with the special exception standards. Uh, so uh, the use uh, uh, of the uh, and operations of the existing ball fields are not proposed to be altered. Uh, the dugout structures meet applicable zoning setback and landscape buffer requirements, and they're consistent with the standards for accessory structures within the underlying RF2 district. Uh, the scale, appearance, and character of the new dugouts will be compatible with consist and consistent to match other existing high school accessory structures and uses. Uh, relative to traffic, the uh, underlying existing school use will not change or, diminish or be diminished or uh, from the existing conditions, and the nature of the traffic does not change. Uh, so uh, there's no concerns there. There is an OSTA certificate for this facility, uh, and it was deemed that this proposal does not affect that in any way, so there was no uh, pursuit of any uh, revision uh, or notice relative to that. Uh, the size of the school campus site uh, with respect to the, the uh, arrangement, uh, type arrangement and capacity of the streets giving access to it uh, does not change in any way. The uh, proposal for the dugout and accessory structures are consistent with the, with the overall campus use and the 2010 plan of conservation and development. The overall location, nature, height of the existing buildings and structures will not change. Uh, the, uh, the dugout structures are relatively small in size and will comply with applicable setback standards. Uh, the appearance will be similar to other accessory school structures. The dugouts will not hinder or discourage or, uh, the appropriate development and use of the adjacent land and buildings. There's no proposal to uh, put in any lighting for these fields. There's no existing lighting for them. Uh, so uh, there's no issues with that. Uh, the sanitary sewer and water supply have ran through already. Uh, the, uh, Proposed dugouts don't change the use to any extent where we'd be talking about uh, a need for changing any parking requirements. And uh, the uh, proposal does not propose, or it's not anticipated to propose any changes to demand for fire, emergency service, or poli uh, police uh, services. Uh, and the uh, structures are not anticipated to uh, create any measurable increase in maintenance. And that's uh, basically it as it relates to the zoning um, issues. Uh, does anybody have any questions?
Well, let's see. Ryan? Uh, isn't there a third field for the property? Is there is on the, uh, on the south, the south field, the first entrance going down. It's not really used by, it's not used by the high school. Oh, okay, so uh, no. The middle league uses it for the team wall. Okay. Mr. Morella, I commend you. You're getting your capstone project done fairly early. It took me all year to get my son to get his done. <laughs> he already presented to the Board of Ed with it, too. That's amazing. Yeah. So, um, no bleachers? No, it's, the bleachers are changing. I'm going to lug my whole chair down again. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm just pretty amazed. No question. Michael? No questions. The only question I have is uh, the metal roof on the softball dugouts. What color? Uh, I think we were looking at uh, a red to match the school. As long as it's not galvanized, that would be like two big mirrors out there. Right. Yeah, I should mention that this did go to the architectural board. Yeah, but there's no mention anywhere of the metal yeah, roof deck color. I just want to make sure that it's not galvanized. Mm -hmm. Or not galvanized color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, let's see if anybody from the uh, public has any comments. Um, is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of this application? Mrs. Bonowski? Gentlemen, yield the podium. Gail Bonowski, 76 Holly Place. Um, seeing as how I have a softball princess in the family, I highly recommend it. <laughs> future Yale student, right? Yes, future Yale student. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who'd like to speak in favor of the application? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to the application? Any general questions or comments? Okay, back to you, gentlemen. Any other questions for us at all? Anything from staff? Just what I mentioned at the beginning, we kind of do have to uh, suggest you adjourn because we need to receive the actual receipt to the public notice. You also need a copy of the Aquarian and uh, state public health receipts as well. Mm -hmm. So, but you could do that. That could be the one issue that's open. So we'll leave it open and receipt of that. We'll have to leave the hearing open just for a couple of, of administrative mm -hmm. reasons. Um, but if you are all set, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate um, it. So anyone have anything else before we move on? Uh, maybe one more question for Scott. What about, uh, is there any lightning risk I was getting hit? I mean, the backstop is much higher than the actual structure. All right. So if so something's going to get hit, it would be I'm that. just thinking of, you know, storm, that's a place someone might decide to go take shelter in, just mm -hmm. in the event that they're down at the football field, running up, something like that. Well, these these are going to be uh, building permits. Okay. So when they go through that process, the building official will Okay. Perfect. Thank you. That's it. Okay, so we will continue this to the 20th. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, Scott. Thanks. I didn't read the instructions for a public hearing. Do you think there's a need to read the instructions at this point? Um, if there's public here, I would suggest you do it. All right. Um, instructions to be given to the audience for public hearing. <clears throat> there are two sets of microphones for both public address and recording of the proceedings. <clears throat> Due to the need for recording, it is important to stand at the microphone at all times and speak into it loudly and clearly in order that everyone in the room can hear and capture what is being said. Individuals speaking from the seats will not be heard and will not be recognized to speak. Order of the hearing of an application. Points of order and responses will be entertained. Exhibits will be read for the record. Applicant and or representatives will present the application and will answer commission questions. The floor will be open to those in favor. The floor will be open to those opposed. The floor will be open to general questions or comments. 
The floor will be open to the applicant who may take the opportunity for closing remarks or rebuttal, after which discussion will close. The applicant or his representatives are the final speakers. No comments shall be accepted from anyone unless recognized by the chair. All questions and comments shall be addressed to the chair who will determine if an answer shall be provided and by whom. There shall be absolutely no discussion between speakers and audience. The commission has no intention to limit the right of any person to speak, but asks that speakers try not to be repetitive. Please try to present new information. If something has been said before, the commission would invite you to indicate your agreement with previous speakers. At no time shall there be displays of emotion, such as applause, cheering, shouting, or similar noise. This is critical as this hearing is being recorded. If this happens, you'll be cautioned. A vote or demonstration by a show of hands, standing by the audience, or similar action will not be recognized. All parties are requested not to talk between themselves while the hearing is in progress. If you feel a need to talk, please step out into the lobby. All speakers, when recognized, must advance to the microphone to speak. Please state your name and address for the record. The chairman reserves the right to cut off discussion if it is not relevant to the application or is presented in an inappropriate manner. This is a legal proceeding, much the same as what would occur in a courtroom setting. Proper decorum that would be observed in that setting. Please turn off all cell phones or similar devices. If you have a need to use these devices, please leave the room and use them outside. Okay, next up is SCP 2018-08, file 1603A, 425 Pepper Street, I-2 District. Uh, we're reconvening this public hearing from November 1st. Uh, Will new exhibits? New exhibits. Exhibit 12, response to planning comments by the applicant. Exhibit 13, response to engineering comments by the applicant. Exhibit 14, project narrative by the applicant. Exhibit 15, updated plan set by the applicant. Exhibit 16, updated planner comments. Exhibit 17, updated engineer comments. That's it. Okay, for the applicant. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jim Rotundo. I'm a licensed professional engineer with Godfrey Hoffman Associates. Our offices are located at 26 Broadway in North Haven. I'm here tonight representing the applicant Growing Designs. Also with me is uh, Steve Kidney, who is the applicant and owner. Uh, since the last meeting, uh, we did submit revised drawings uh, to staff addressing uh, the comment letters uh, received from Mr. Agresta and uh, Mr. Schatzlein. Um, those comments were essentially uh, some clarifications and notations on the drawing. Uh, the proposal uh, essentially stayed the same. Uh, there were no changes from our last presentation. Uh, there was uh, essentially two changes, um, minor changes to the proposal. In, in our ori original proposal, we had a, a structured uh, temporary storage area proposed in this location here. Uh, it was going to be enclosed with concrete block walls. Um, that was the subject of uh, several comments uh, from the town planner. Um, during our staff discussion, uh, uh, Mr. Kidney elected to just remove that from the project. Uh, and what we are showing up in this area here, up in the uh, adjacent to the dumpster areas, we're just delineating a, a small area uh, where he may be storing some containerized shrubs on a temporary basis just to be used on, on current jobs they have. Uh, also, uh, we are proposing just to define uh, the pavement and parking area. Uh, we're going to be installing curb along this edge of pavement uh, from the garage down to the essentially the driveway or the handicapped parking spaces. Uh, as I indicated, we did submit these drawings to staff. Uh, we did receive letters back that their comments were satisfactorily addressed. Um, 
with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions of the commission. Ryan, you're up. No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. My only comment is <clears throat> you basically have an, still have an outdoor storage component, but it's short material. So you, you don't necessarily, you wouldn't have to put in landscape screening for shrub material. But that, that, I just wanted to be clear that that is not an approved outdoor storage area. It's strictly for plant material. Uh, full, fully understood, Mr. Chairman, fully understood. Uh, with regard to screening, we do have, it's not directly around that area we're defining, uh, but along the northerly side of the, uh, the office, the proposed office, we do have a stockade fence which is being installed as well as Arbor Vitae, which is going to be in front of that fence. So from the street, that whole rear area is being screened. Okay. Um, that was the only comment I had. Um, is there anything that, that you had? No, th again, this project was approved a long time ago, and this is sort of a reapproval of it with some enhancements to it. And the only thing that's a little quirky about it, I think, is the driveway. Right now it's gravel, it's going to be paved as part of the project, obviously, but the Pepper Street improvements, the, the scheduling of those two things are going to be a little wonky, I think, so, we, and the state is going to do part of that paving, so there may be a little weirdness with that part of it. Right. I remember there was also an issue with the sidewalk alongside the building, but um, I think, I think they previous, did what you said, yeah. In our previous hearing, we said that that could remain the two minutes as long as it's there's a line. Mark, that's no, it. We're delineating the, the difference between the driveway and the sidewalk area. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Um, um, the only other comment that I think, I don't know if you had other comments, Scott, but in that area that was the old storage, um, I didn't comment this, but Scott did. I, I think it, it should be more than just that tree, and maybe that tree should be in the middle. So it doesn't open the idea to turn it into storage if it's just open. So if you could shrub that or or put the tree in the middle? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's okay. Um, let's see if we have any public input. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of the application? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Any general questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Rotundo. Just, just before you close, I just want to indicate that the recommendation for the bond is $10,000, which is the existing bond amount that was originally Is that suitable? Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I think uh, we thank you for uh, your time in this matter. <clears throat> what, what do you think? Close. 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 All right. Chair's closed. Thank, thank you, you very much. Next up, SEP 2018-09, file 16048, Four Maple Drive, I-1 District. Uh, this is reconvened from November 1st. Uh, Will, what, anything new? Exhibit 10, response to planning comments. Exhibit 11, response to engineer comments. Exhibit 12, updated plan set. Exhibit 13, updated plan comments. And Exhibit 14, updated engineer comments. That is all. And for the applicant. Bill Carboni, SPAC, Yorkland Associates. I'm a professional engineer licensed in the state. Uh, Dave is uh, sick and will not be able to attend the meeting tonight, and we asked him to go home uh, during the day. He's really quite sick. In any case, this project is uh, started off as a project to clear some wetlands violations, which was to have, there was storage one point in time on the, uh, this area, which is not regulated, 
I've written that aloud. There was millings placed in this area that are not legal and within the uh, regulated area. And the other was the placement of some retained stones in the retaining wall along this area. In order to clear this, we began a project. And Mr. O'Keefe, who uh, owns this property, wanted to construct a driveway that would lead from his existing parking lot here across the back part of the property to another existing property uh, driveway that is in this area, leads out to Victoria Drive. Thereby, his employees can go out to the 25 on Main Street without having to go through the uh, intersection of Maple and Main. This is a very bad intersection, either coming out and going either north or south. The line of sight is uh, bad, the, and it's a grade going up. So the idea was to incorporate the uh, project that would uh, clear the violations with improving traffic safety in this area. The project was submitted to the Wetland Commission uh, that would clear the violations and propose a driveway. This was approved by Wetlands in June of this year. This hearing began on November 1st. Will and Scott had comments on the plan. We revised the plans and resubmitted those plans on November 28th. Again, Will and Scott had some minor suggestions. I spoke with Scott yesterday and we discussed these uh, suggestions. Uh, Will's comments have been made part, all of Will's comments have been made part of this new set of plans. Um, I have provided Scott and Will a list of the changes that would show that we have uh, met with all the con uh, comments that the staff has made. If these plans are acceptable, uh, I'd like to make those changes part of the conditions of approval for this project. Is there any questions? Any questions? You addressed uh, Will's comments from November 30th? Yes. Okay. Yes, all of them. That's the only question. Most of them are relatively minor. Right. Uh, doesn't show up particularly here. But in the original submitted plans, uh, this area was supposed to be cross-hatched, got turned off and never did it, so it's okay. not clear. Sure. Uh, there is other minor things, but they have all been addressed in the new set of plans. Okay. Uh, including comment three uh, regarding the striping. Uh, an appropriate ADA parking space signage, all that's yeah. going to take care of? Um, well, you remember, there are no striping on the parking lot now. Okay. So what we've shown on the plan is a potential striping plan that would conform with the parking requirements, handicap requirements, a number of spaces for this use. Uh, if this is approved, what we would do is uh, make the striping of those in the field part of the approval and part of the construction. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Michael? No, I'm not questions. Um, I don't have anything. Will, is there anything that... Um... Um, I don't. I mean, I obviously didn't check the plans, but they're pretty simple things that can be taken care of. Right. I'm confident they can be done, so I'm okay if you want to make that, that verification conditional. Um, there was one, I think, you you didn't articulate in your in your memo, but it's about taking a work phase to all the work. It, that right. was done. Yeah. But again, it's a simple thing. So from my perspective, if, if you want to make those things confirmation, that's fine. Okay. All right, Mr. Carbone, let's see if we have any public input. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in favor of this application? Anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Any general questions or comments? Back to you, sir. Before you close on that and bond recommendation, uh, I did not receive a bond estimate, but I went ahead and did it on my own. Uh, bond recommendation is $5,000. Acceptable? acceptable? Yes. Okay. I have 11 sets of the maps here for submission for 
review by staff, so I will submit those to them and uh, ask for your approval. Okay. Well, gentlemen, close. 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 Right. Anything else, Will? No, I don't. Scott, anything? Okay. Marriage closed. 8 11 p.m. Zoning Commission Monroe, Connecticut notice public hearing to be held December 6, 2018 in accordance with Connecticut General Statutes 8-7D a public hearing will be held in the Town Hall Council Chamber, 7 Fanhole Road, Monroe, Connecticut on Thursday, December 6, 2018 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter concerning the following. Uh, RAA 2018-04, file number 999E, zoning regulation text amendments, Residential Farming Districts RF1, RF2, and RF3. Planning and Zoning Commission proposed zoning regulations, text amendments, amending and expanding the standards and requirements concerning the keeping of animals in residential farming districts RF1, RF2, and RF3. All right, what do we, any new exhibits, Will? Well, this is the opening of the hearing, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So there should okay. be a new exhibits. Okay, exhibit one uh, draft zoning text amendments as proposed by the commission. Exhibit two regional planning referral notice notices. Exhibit three adjacent municipality referral notices. Exhibit four uh, watershed referral notice. Exhibit five West Cog regional planning is a response referral um, indicating no concerns of regional impact. Um, exhibit six, um, a table that I prepared and presented to you at the previous meeting um, comparing other municipalities um, regulations regarding FAL. Exhibit seven, uh, Naugatuck Valley Regional Planning is a referral acknowledgement. And exhibit eight, a response from the Naugatuck Valley Regional Planning is again, no regional impact. Exhibit 9, um, ART comments from engineer. And Exhibit 10, uh, correspondence to the Planning and Zoning Commission from Commissioner Rosie. That is all for that. Um, the hearing was, uh, you read the notice that said when it was noticed. We did not receive a response from Metro Cog, but the time period in which they have to respond has passed, so that's considered the same as no comment. Do you have a copy? Okay. So I'll run through the regulation proposal as from the commission. This affects um, accessory use of the keeping of animals in the three single-family residential districts, the RF1, the RF2, and the RF3. The amendment is to section 3.1.3C, uh, accessory uses buildings or structures may include. Um, presently, the, the existing regulations include um, in one location, in subsection 5, all animals of different sizes. Um, this amendment would take the fowl, chicken particularly, out of that first section and make a new section six, which would be specific to fowl. Um, and it would repeat some of the language as far as the public health hazard information and, and precautions and um, how did they would sit in the property. So that's subsection six, making that the set, we're removing fowl here and making a separate section under subsection six. In addition, we would amend section 3.16 regarding the setbacks, and that relates to the number of fowl that are kept. So depending on the number of fowl you kept, the, the setback would be different for the structure related there too. And the commission in, originally, this, the, there was a combination of setback and a minimum acreage requirement. With this amendment, there'd be no more acreage requirement. It would all be dictated by providing appropriate setback. So that would open the property, many more properties in town to have the keeping of chickens 
or on the foul. Um, so if you had 12, um, if you housed a male foul or more than 12, you would have a 100-foot setback. If you had less than that, it would be a 50-foot setback. In addition, the, the amendments are calling for a 50-foot setback related to the manure piles for all animals. Um, obviously, that's one thing. Manure doesn't differ much from one animal to the other, other than maybe the quantity, and you know. But so there would be a 50-foot setback for that, and that would affect these regulations would affect going forward. Anyone that presently do not does not meet these and is operating under those conditions, they would be grandfathered, and they would be able to continue to do that, you know, as long as they don't change it. Um, but this would be primarily for new new instances. The additional uh, amendments. Come, you're not on my drive. No, I'm sorry. So that's that's it. That's it in a nutshell. Any questions? Questions? So that means this is moot, right? This correspondence? No. No. Not at all. Okay. That's a, that letter is simply requesting that we not close the hearing tonight. Okay. <clears throat> but do you have any questions concerning the proposed well, text? No, I think the I think the issue was it was if people already have that fifty foot setback or less, if they're grandfathered and you answered that, so we're all set with that then. Except for new farmers, correct? Well if it's a new establishment, yeah, yeah they would have to do it. Like anything, they'd have to do according to the current code at the time. Okay. All right. I don't have any questions. No questions. I don't have any questions, but somebody might. Um, so let's open the floor to the public. Is there anyone who would like to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Any general questions or comments? I knew it was too good to be true, right? Well, I knew you were here for a reason. <laughs> uh, Gail Banofsky, 76 Holly Place. Um, there's some very good things in these regulations, but there's just a few things I would like to go over. Um, number one, we are a farming community. Whether we, From day one, when they zoned it, we are RF1, residential and farming. By default, every person in here is a farmer if they live in RF1, RF2, or RF3. This chart is probably very accurate, but there's something missing. Which First chart, of all, it brings chart the, the that? chart that, that Will said he made up. The referencing the other Yeah, towns. referencing the other towns. Um, they, the setbacks, as you can see, range from five feet to 100 feet. All of these towns, we don't know what their POCD reads. We don't know what their zoning is. And we, they, I don't believe any of them except us have a uh, farming code, the right to farm in their, in their town code. Um, I think there's, there's a great book. I just have the cover of it. Planning for Agriculture, a Guide for Connecticut Municipalities. And it's published by the American Farmland Trust and the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities. And these are experts. And I think before we write regulations or something, we should expose ourselves to true experts. Um, let's see what else here. Um, I think we have to fix something in our definitions. In our definitions, first of all, there's no fowl defined. Definition of agriculture, it says the raising and carrying of livestock, poultry, and bees, as defined in Connecticut statute. They don't say anything about fowl. Then in our This is in our definition, but excuse me, that's in our definitions. We don't mention vowel. In the, um, no, wait, I have to get this back again. 
In our definitions, it says the keeping of livestock, horses, and fowl. So our definition of agriculture in the states are two different. We say fowl, they say poultry. Poultry is any uh, chickens or any, any um, chicken or duck, anything kept, uh, kept for eggs or meat. That's it. That's it. That's what the poultry is, and that's what we're concerned about. We're not concerned about swans or water ducks or anything like that. So we should change. So you would like our, re our regulation to be more restrictive? Egg, I would like it to say poultry. If you want to do another one for fowl, fine. Fine. For, for water birds or, like I say, swans or whatever's not defined by... Uh, the, the state statues as poultry. Um, let me see here. Excuse me, Molly. Um, manure, I think what you, everybody wants clean water, especially me. You guys know that. I was in conservation for eight years. Um, Manure piles shall be located and maintained so as to prevent runoff and polluting materials onto adjacent properties, roads, wells, and water courses. Fencing and instructions shall be installed. I, that's all we need. That's all we need. I have, I have manure piles, compost, excuse me, compost piles. It starts out as, now as you know, horse manure is just grass. That's all it is. So I use... $200 a month worth of bedding. So I have a lot of bedding. It, first, it's, first it's manure. Within a month, it's compost, and you could put it around all your plants for decorative instead of buying. And then in, within three months, it's black gold. So at what point is it compost, and what point is it black gold? Um, ask my son. <laughs> My, not, my, not the son you're thinking, my other son. <laughs> anyway, let's go back here. So, I don't, know, I don't know, we have health regulations regarding the manure. I don't know why we would have to put the, especially in a, um, in a one acre zone, uh, you're asking 50 feet. It's, you know, it's really, um, Confining what they can use their property, how much land they it's can also, use. It's also, remember, Mrs. Bonaski, these, these regulations aren't written just for the people who want chickens. I these are also I written to protect the people who don't want chickens. Well, you know, I also got, I also got uh, the complaints, and there were only two complaints in the past year, over a year, about chickens, and one was, it was one, one woman complained like 10 times. To who? Where were the complaints? Uh, you know, did I bring those with me? There was one lady complaining about her neighbor's chicken. Oh, well, I, yeah, I just wanted to know who were they complaining to? Where did the complaint? Oh, they complained to, to Joe Chapman. To the, oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, but you're right. I think um, people have to be responsible, of course. And first of all, if you let your chickens loose, within a month you're not going to have chickens because the wildlife in this, in this town have no place to go. We have destroyed their habitat completely. And I get bobcats and, and it took 40 years in my property to see a fox, but we see them now. They're, they just had no place to go. So. If, you have, you have chickens and you turn them loose, you're not going to have them long. You won't, you won't have to worry about them. So, um, let's see. What else? Definition of fowl in there. Um, or perhaps you're suggesting we change fowl to poultry. Well, you change, you change yes, to, to uh, go with the state, which is poultry. Why would you want that? I'm just curious. Because it, it, would, it would correspond with the state's Definition of agriculture. It would be, yeah, it would, it would correspond with the state, which is the keeping of horses. That's it. 
Okay, anything to go else, back to Mr. Agriculture, the inside and outside growing of crops, raising, carrying, livestock. Anyway, this is ours, and this is ours, I guess. See, now I'm getting confused with this. So you have two different definitions. One is in the definition, and the other is in the RF1, RF2, and RF3 zone. That's what it is. I'll get it right, yeah. Do you see that? Well, our, our definition of agriculture says poultry. Yes. And there, there is a big difference between poultry and, and uh, fowl. What's the difference between poultry and fowl? Poultry is just birds kept for meat or eggs. That's it. Uh -huh. In other words, you're farming animals. And fowl includes swans and ducks. Ducks. Or whatever, or well, ducks. it would be water. You could keep ducks for eggs. Pigeons. Or, or eating also for meat. Okay. A lot of people eat duck well, and we'll duck eggs. Not. We'll look into that. Will you please look into that? Thank you. Yes. Um, I don't know what else. Like I say, our POCD is very important, our zoning regs are important, and our town code is important. And we don't know what this other people. Do you want to, I don't know if you've seen this book, if you want to look at this book. It is online. Okay. Right. You want to give that to Will? Sure. And it has, like I say, like I say some, some good things. We want it done right. We want, we want it done right. I want it done right. And we, we agree with you on 100%. So, thank, thank you. you guys. Anyone else with any general questions or comments? <clears throat> Lee Hosker, 272 Stanley Road. Um, what happened to the 24, what was the magic number, I guess, of 12? Wow. Um, it, I don't know where that number comes from, but there's got to be, uh, if, if you have a chicken house, that's X number of, say, 100, uh, uh, 10 by 10, 100 square feet. And you put 12 chickens in there. Uh, I mean, it's not a whole lot different than, than building an office building. Uh, there are specifications around each person. It must be a cer certain amount of square footage. Uh, why, if they had a larger chicken house and they relied on eggs from those chickens to sell, why, what's a, why is the reduction to 12 without some other Dimensions. You can you can have more than twelve. If you have twelve or less, there's a fifty foot setback requirement. If mm -hmm. you have more than twelve, there's a one hundred foot setback requirement. That's that's the only bearing that those the numbers have. The setback is from your property. That's the line. criteria. It's not how large the, the chicken house is. It, no, it's not. It's how many chickens you have and how far from the property. Okay, line. that's strange because where I came from, there. There are chicken houses down there. There are 25,000 chickens in a house. And it's based on the square footage of how many chickens you can put in the, the huge houses. And that's why I'm looking at this and saying it's, it's kind of strange that you say, well, you can only this have is, 12. This is, this is <laughs> so, an accessory use in the yeah. RF zone. So I doubt that we're going to get someone with 25,000 chickens in their backyard. Um, <laughs> No, these are, these are real farms. I'm yeah, talking that, about. that's a commercial use. This is an accessory use in the residential zone. That's okay. what this that's regulation uh, All right. Thank you. pertains to. Thank you. Anyone else with any general questions or comments? Okay. Will? Um, with regards to health regulations, I'm not aware that there was actually a health regulation that deals specifically with the setback of a chicken coop for purposes of uh, property values and, and property impacts. They do have, I believe, some setbacks relative to, I'm not sure if it's about the coop or the manure, but something with regards to the wells, perhaps. Um, but they don't really deal with setbacks because of property issues. That's really the purpose of zoning regulations. The main tenet of zoning regulations is the health, wealth, and safety. Of, of property. 
Um, with regards to poultry versus fowl, if you want to switch it to poultry, that's up to you. Um, I don't think just because you do that, it automatically goes to the state. If, if we don't have the f refinement of poultry within our definition, um, if that's only in the state regulations, it doesn't automatically get to that part. I don't know if it matters. It, I mean, poultry, fowl, chicken, um, I get the, un the understanding. If you want to go to poultry, that word's fine. Um, and as you said, this is an accessory use. This is not a commercial use. So it's the keeping of, of, of these for personal use. It's not for selling. It's not retail. Um, and it's a small scale thing, relatively. And if you have the property and you can have the setback, you can have as many chickens as your property and you want to build a coop to fit them. Okay. Two things that I would like the commissioners uh, to weigh in on. Number one would be changing any reference to fowl in our proposed text amendment to poultry. Let's just go down the line. Yes or no? I'm just going to um, have another question before I... Well, our, our, our ag definition of agriculture in our regulations... It says poultry or it says that? says the inside and or outside growing of crops, raising of and caring for livestock, poultry, and bees. Oh, that's yeah. in our... So, yeah, so for continuity... We definition. Switch it, yeah, switch it to poultry then. So I think it would be appropriate to no. keep the same wording. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Panowski. We don't. I agree. We don't define poultry anywhere. Right? We don't. Um, and or do we define horse or livestock? Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with the change. My point that poultry is defined as domestic fowl such as chickens, turkey, ducks, and geese. I think that's what Mrs. Bonofsky's aiming for, and that's fine with me, too. All right, so we're going we're gonna to change any reference to, of fowl to poultry. Now, the second thing that I would like the commission to weigh in on is we have a request from <coughs> Commissioner Ambrosi, who is out of town and he is requesting um, that we hold this hearing open because he would like to address to the commission in person the issue of the 50-foot setback for the manure piles um, and to ensure that such standard is not imposed on existing farm operations which may currently be closer to the proposed setback you know as will told us in his presentation you know this regulation amendment does not impact any existing conditions. So anyone who currently has a manure pile that is within closer than 50 feet to a property line. So there were no regulations prior to these as far as- Not for the manure pile. Not, not okay. setbacks, no. So any existing conditions are pre-existing conditions. So. Do we want to do you, do you want to hold this hearing open um, so Leon can address that point with us, or do you think it's no longer a, an issue? Was Leon help? He was with the subcommittee. Right? He was concerned about existing manure piles that may not meet that standard. Yeah, I think we'll answer that. So I would say close. All right, and that also includes like if he sold his farm to a new farmer. That's not grandfather? No. Yes, it is. It is. As long as they operate, if whatever is not conforming, if they operate in the same manner, right. that's fine. If they go to make changes and do something different, whatever they do differently would have to comply. Okay, that's what I was getting at before. I mean, he, he basically answered what he's asking here. So yeah. I don't see no reason to keep it open because he's already answered all his questions it, right here. Think about it. It's no, this is a bigger example, but you have a house. Right. It was built in 1800. It's 10 feet from the property line, from the front yard, right, which is pretty typical from most historic houses, right? It's a house, been a house forever. People live in it. You sell it. You changed ownership. You don't have to comply with the setback just because you changed ownership. Right. It runs with the land. Yeah. 
But if you want to add on to the house, you got to come on. I would say keep it open uh, because Commissioner Ambrosi requests the commission keep it open. I think if that's the only concern, I don't think we don't need to keep it open. Okay, well, the commissioners have spoken and uh, we'll close the hearing. Okay. Any other uh, last, con last minute comments, questions? Anyone? All right. The hearing is closed. Oh. Site plan review and permit amendment modifications. There's none. Item number 10, time extensions. SDP 2017-03, file 123, 233, 235, Monroe Turnpike. Request for a 90-day extension. Is there anyone here representing this property? Um, we received a letter. Um, dear Commission, in regard to application SDP 2017-03, file number 123, on behalf of EEE Equities LLC, the applicant respectfully requests an extension of an additional 240 days for the above reference matter to provide additional time for satisfying the conditions of approval. The current expiration date for plan signatures and filing of copies is November 15, 2018. This letter is dated November 15th. Um, in an email from the applicant, they requested a 90-day extension, um, and in this letter, they're requesting a 240-day extension. Um, I propose that we grant them, or potentially grant them a 90-day extension. Um, this is probably their fourth or fifth extension. Yeah, and I don't know why they're not here. Well, I can't say anything. But um, we've, we told them that they really need to come and explain to more specifically why they need the extension. He said they were going to come. Obviously, they're not here, but you can do what you feel is appropriate. All right, so I'll entertain a motion. I move to grant a 90-day time extension to SDP 2017-03, file one, two, three. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? No. Well, I think you should just impress upon the applicant that we really need to hear what's going on. This is, you yeah. know, many, many extensions with no feedback from them. Okay. Um, any further questions? Is this the McDonald's? No, no. this is Monroe Turnpike. This is a, oh. um, where is it? It's the house, a yeah, little a, bit south a of, houses. of Monroe Well. Yeah. All oh, those two, two yeah, white shacks or whatever it is? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. You got approved to renovate them into um, offices. Right. Any other questions? What's the extension? Call the roll to give us the contact. Con, yes. Will, yes. yes. Paul McGillie, yes. Thanks. Porter, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, O'Reilly, yes. Are they okay. passed? Is there any other time limit? It's a five year to, to build it out, but he has to get through the first step to do that. So the five years haven't started. No, it has started. He's clicking on it. Item number 11, bond releases or reductions, <clears throat> SDP 2016-06, file 1576A, two thirty two, two thirty four, two thirty six Main Street, B2 District, request for full final release of $18,000 bond. We have a bond release report from the town engineer um, notifying us that all work has been completed and he is recommending a complete release of the bond. So I'll entertain a motion. Um, move to release the full $18,000 bond on SCP 2016-6 by 1576A. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Condon, yes. Wilk, yes. Former Kelly, yes. Porter, yes. O'Reilly, yes. Okay, item number 12, meeting minutes for November 14, 2018. Everyone was present except Bruno. Anyone? Have it. 
Uh, move to uh, accept the November 14th, 2018 Planning and Zoning Commission minutes as drafted. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Any comments, questions, corrections? Nothing? No. Call the roll. Condon, yes. Wilk, yes. Porter McKellar, yes. Porter, yes. Porter, yes. Motion passes. Item number 13, pending application deliberations and determinations. All right, let's see. First up, we have SCP 2018-11. That we held open, right? We yeah. can't yeah, we won't deliberate on that. Um, or, or can we deliberate on that? Can't deliberate on it, but I mean, I, I mean, in contemplation of the next meeting and what all is needed, um, we can prepare a draft for your consideration, or, and you can decide what you want to do with the next meeting. All right. Okay. So that was yes. We. Well, you're not deliberating, but I'll do something, and if you like it, you can do it when you close it. You're going to draft an approval. Yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Maybe. Four twenty-five Pepper Street. SCP two thousand eighteen dash oh eight file one six zero three A. We close that hearing. Yep. Yes. My notes are that well, I didn't have anything. They, were, they agreed to do the um, additional planting. Well, they agreed to move the tree. Move the tree and do additional planting underneath it so they you know, wouldn't be convenient to store stuff there. You think that was, was there anything in you, Scott? Uh, just uh, contingent on approval uh, for the Cuban Highway modification permit in coordination with the uh, and, and the bond. And the bond to uh, Just note in the approval that there's no outside storage. Yeah, then that, that would be limited to plant material. Okay. Okay. I can add those if that's the closure of the commission. So what do you think about that one, gentlemen? Draft approval. Yeah. 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 Approval. yeah. All right, so we'll I say draft and approval based on those, you know, those yep. few little things. Okay. Um, next, we have SCP 2018-09, file 1604A for Maple Drive. It, it wasn't clear to me. He has revised site plans? He submitted them here. Okay. Um, the, the comments that I had were, were used for me confirming them. I can confirm them with the draft. Scott, I assume similar since you didn't raise anything. But. Yeah, I had stuff that just I just need to uh, confirm what we agreed upon in the whole conversation. I'm pretty comfortable with Okay. And I don't think the commission raised any new issues. But. No, there was nothing new. So anything new on that one? Any questions? Any further discussion points? The only the other point I would I'd ask you to 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 uh, deliberate on is this really came about more as a uh, remedi remediation or fix to a violation as opposed to I mean it is a development project to build something but it's it's first and foremost for remediation so I didn't know if you wanted to put in any specific timing to get it done faster than otherwise because of the fact is that there anything in wetlands for timing or I don't know was there there's a timing requirement in the in the wetlands approval that I provided you in um, and it is by um, Extended because of the uh, ongoing uh, application for PNC, and 
all work in phase two. Phase two is the area north of the driveway that the Wetlands Commission felt that if they did not come in with a plan for development of that area by November 2021, then that area had to be uh, planted per the planting plan that they submitted to the Wetlands Commission. Now that, that planting plan in that area is about 80% of it is in the upland review area for wetlands. And then there's a little sliver of that uh, that's beyond the um, upland review area that would just be under your jurisdiction. Right, but that's not part of our approval. Um, our approval is, is strictly the, the roadway, correct? Well, the plantings are part of it too, but in a sense you can bisect the, the wetland related plantings from there are some other plantings besides well, the wetland plants. But yeah, I think I think a, a June thirtieth completion is, is more than reasonable. Give them all spring, and you know, for part one, no, for what we to remediate the site and build the building. For what for part one, what was on our for what was on our plan? We have no phase two. Yeah, right, but you're saying if they come with a plan, then they have to do phase two. No, yeah, they I, have I a plan now, so they have to do phase two. Correct me if I'm wrong, Will, but if, if that happens and, and Inland Wetlands forces phase two to happen, they're going to force them to come, they're going to have to come before P and Z to get an approval to do that. That planting is not on the plan? No. Yeah, well, yeah, so then we don't worry about that. We want we, them to finish like, the plan. That's what I said. We're, oh, well, we're approving our plan. Hold on a second. Let me just double check. If they're getting out of doing the park. No, well, part two is not coming It's a building. Adding a building. Building a new building. Oh, that's that's another another part of it. No, no, no. They have a small amount of planting along the north or the west side of the road. The big violation is in the north, though. Yeah, it's not on your. Actually, it's the south side of the road. The northern part of the property. They just, you know, they, they felt they would give them a break on those plantings uh, because you know, the argument that was made was, you know, I do all these plantings and then come in with a proposed building with a parking lot and I can rip all the plantings out. So they said, okay, well, we'll give you a certain period of time. Well, here, here's what I suggest because this is what we're approving, not, not whatever they went to weapons with. This is what we're approving. Yep. I suggest we give them a June 30th deadline. If they want to do something in the meantime, they can come back to us. Yeah, I agree. Does that rest well with everyone else? When would the deadline be? The June 30th. Yeah, because it was originally in November of this year. Pardon me? It was originally. Last month. Yeah, it was originally supposed to be November. The remediation, yeah. remediation. That was that was the wetlands issue. Oh, that was the wetlands that's one. Wetlands. Okay, that's gotcha. not us. Sorry. So yeah, June 30th seems fine. Yeah, no, they have to go they have to go grade it. Yeah, they have to go grade it. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have to build a couple of houses. Yeah, they have July. We have two mean on July. I think we only have one no, because no, it's important. No, no. June we have two. July we have one. Okay. So June sixth and June twentieth. Right, so then by June thirtieth they have to approve it. So if they don't, we'd be seeing them in the July. Meeting. Well, you should be seeing them a lot earlier than that. They're not if they're not going to be done by the end of June, they should know by the middle of May. Let us know. Okay. Yeah, June thirtieth. All right. So. We'll instruct Will to go forward with a uh, with an approval on that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the last item is RAA 2018-04 file 999E zoning regulation text amendment. So, if I understood correctly, the only potential modification to our draft is that we're changing fowl to poultry. Everything else remains the same, correct? Right.
That's right. Okay. I didn't hear your head nod, so I'm sorry. <laughs> um, anything else? What do we want to have Will do? Anyone? I'm sorry. Do you want what, to what would, what, how would we like to instruct Will? Draft approval with the change to, to from foul change to word. poultry. Do we need another draft approval or do we just. We We're going to draft an approval. Okay, we'll do that. We'll have it for the 20. What's that? We'll have it for the 20. Yeah. Leon can chime in. No, no, no he can't. No, no. Oh, because we don't. So we have yep. Public hearing support. He's saying that anyway. after you vote. <laughs> he will. Don't you worry. I want to be good. He's covered. Anyway, it's all covered. All right. Um, I think that wraps up all of our pending deliberations. Yes? Yes. I'm not forgetting anything? No. Okay. Item 14, Regulation Review Amendment Work Session. We should probably schedule another meeting. What's, what's next week look like? When's the Planning and Zoning Christmas Party? <laughs> I don't know. The, um, the well, that was um, the town planner's job. Vice chair usually takes oh, care of that. <laughs> I, I thought it was the town planner. No, I, I do no, pizza no, or the or can be, or can be in the restaurant. <laughs> Good pizza, not big white pizza. No, no, no. Quite they do a bacon macaroni party pizza. Oh, God. Is it great? No. Gets the job done. <laughs> Next, My best Tuesday day is Monday. Thursday. Your best day is Monday? Yeah. Let's have it at Stevens and Lumber. Michael, what's your schedule? Tuesday's Tuesday's okay. Tuesday's okay. Yeah, there's a cool event. I don't know. Is Leon back? I don't know. I don't know. I'll send him a text. Um, Go kart drive. Why don't we play Monday? You got to do yours tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You'll make sure that that gets. Oh, you won't be here. No, that's got to get noticed tomorrow. I'll do it Friday. You do it when? On Friday. Oh, okay. I'll take Friday. So that's uh, December 10th? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 5.30? 5.30. Correspondence, other received. I have not received any correspondence. Anybody else? Uh, no. Commission reports. Uh, I have nothing new to report. Anybody else? No. Floor is yours. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I have prepared uh, my first uh, town planner report to you. You have a copy. I, I need your uh, assistance in any additional information, data that you would like to be included. This is something that I brought with me from Shelton. Uh, I broke it down to zoning matters, planning matters, meeting schedules, and then I give a quick overview of residential construction because residential obviously is an important component. Zoning matters, ZBA, uh, was canceled for this month, no applications. Next uh, meeting, January 8th. Siting Council, no applications were made to the Connecticut Siting Council regarding telecommunications facilities. In Shelton, we, have, we had a lot of uh, telecommunications facilities scattered around the town, and obviously that can impact neighborhoods. So that's why I, I bring this up. Uh, regulations subcommittee, we scheduled it tonight to talk about a variety of issues. Uh, the zoning enforcement program, there are no notices of violations issued during this reporting period. The zoning citation pro uh, program, the 887 Main Street matter, information was received and they are uh, reviewing that so I'll, I'll keep you updated on that uh, planning matters obviously the commission is giving the green light to proceed with the uh, 2000 POCD uh, update uh, obviously that's an important planning uh, uh, document you heard it tonight 
and uh, that's something that's going to be uh, quite involved, town-wide involved. Does that RFP was approved to go out? Uh, it was, it's a draft, and it's a, a work in progress. When do we expect that's going to go out? It's the commission draft. Yeah. I, well, I, I don't know if it was executed, though. Yeah. No, it wasn't. I don't think it was. But does I, the, this, go, this goes back a few months. The commission right. approved that. Draft. Right. Um, we did one. We revised it. Um, and it was the final revision was done like a week before you were starting. So yeah. then it was like, well, we should wait until Rick starts and let him review it. Yeah, um, I, I gave the green light to it. I reviewed it. So. Okay, so where does that stand now? It's ready to uh, proceed. You know, I'll, I'll uh, talk to the first selectman tomorrow. Yeah, if, if, if he's good with it, we got to get that attorney's posted, good yeah. with it, we got to get that RFP out. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to have to re, re up the dating as well because the dates are all out of sync now. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, uh, th that's a high priority. We'll get that going. Okay. ASAP. Uh, the other documents are regional, state, and tri state. Uh, the metro, they updated theirs 2016. Uh, I, I just learned that the 2018 2023 state conservation plan uh, was never acted on by the General Assembly. I did not know that. So, uh, it, the, the next uh, meeting of the General Assembly by the legislation uh, will have to take that up. So the 2013 through 2018 uh, remains in effect. Um, and lastly, the, the, the regional plan, that's the tri-state New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. And theirs was updated 217. As the chairman indicated, the next meeting is December 20th. Uh, you uh, directed uh, well to prepare uh, those resolutions and the last uh, section is residential last year the uh, department issued 17 single-family dwellings uh, we're up to nine the uh, there are two rebuilds due to fire so uh, it was reduced by 50 percent unless you see any more coming in well that's, I don't think there are that many more building lots. Well, we do have, we do have a fair number of lots in, in Bird's Eye State, yeah. which is where some of those houses come from. And uh, I think there's a few lots. I think they've all been sold, but they may not all been built on in the Whitetail Deer, Deer Meadows uh, State subdivision. Um, but you're right. And there's a few from Jockey, um, Jockey Hollow Road. There were three houses or four houses built along there, if you notice, if you drive yeah. that way. Um, so those are the newer houses, but you're right. There isn't... There is another development that does have approval for 20 lots, which is Steiner's property up in the north end, which That's coming is up on very, time. Yeah, it's coming up it? on time. And it's, they were here. You, yeah. right, you gave them an extension not too long ago. But uh, that's a very difficult property. It's, it's just nice to have this information. It's data for yeah. projections. We'll be using that in our POCD. It's also interesting to know, because I've been working in the area for a long time. Shelton like a lot of suburban communities at one time was issuing 150 to 200 dwelling units annually. I, I haven't investigated Monroe what, what the peak was, but it's interesting to know how we've uh, matured as suburban communities. Yeah. So it's, it's, really, it's really way down. And that's why the, the enrollments are down. So, Eddie, if you have any other suggestions that you want me to include, please give me uh, send me an email. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Anyone? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. <laughs>